have a song that the angels can't sing. It goes amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Now I have a song that the angels can't sing. Oh, I have a song that the angels can't sing.
All right, good morning. Welcome to Lighthouse Baptist Church. I hope you stand with us this morning, if you would. Uh, we're going to start this morning singing a song, Hallelujah, What a Savior. It's a familiar hymn, uh, actually written by Philip Bliss, who is a Pennsylvania man. Um, but it's a powerful song. It has so much doctrine in it. It gives the whole story. Um, of course, Jesus Christ coming, the crucifixion. So sing with us, if you would. Hallelujah, What a Savior. Of the man of sorrows. Man of sorrows, what a name. than anything we could ever need it to cover. So again, it's a familiar song. We've sung it a few times now. Um, join us if you would. This one starts off called Praise the Lord, His Mercy is More.
worship another one that's probably somewhat familiar to most of us we've sung it here for a long time uh, but just reinforcing the whole reason we're here it's easy to come to church Sunday morning because that's what we do mm -hmm. um, but we're here for more than just to you know get ourselves pat on the head and hear some nice scriptures we're here um, of course to, to hear from God's word but we're here also to worship him so that's what the song says I hope you'll join us on this last song as we sing here I am to worship
Oh. Are you in there? Yeah. I'm confused as usual. Well, good morning. Hope you had a great, great week uh, this week. You know, sometimes one of the biggest complaints is, uh, I don't want to go to church because all they want is your, go ahead and say it, money. The Bible does say the love of money is what? The root of all evil. I'm firm, I firmly, this is, this is no psychology I'm trying to use on you, but it's the truth. Uh, I firmly believe with all my heart if every individual Christian gave and did their part, guess what? The preacher would never have to mention. I believe with all my heart, all joking aside, yes, never have to mention money because there'd be enough for everything we wanted to do. Uh, whether it's VBS or trunk or treat coming up or whatever it is that we want to do. Uh, it would be there. Why? Because um, everybody's being obedient to God. Everybody's giving. Everybody's doing their part. And wow, what a wonderful world uh, that would be, you know. Um, so do your part. I encourage you. Of course, you know, the winter months are coming. Calvin and I were just talking before he left town. And uh, pretty soon, uh, you know, we're debating on do we lock in at a price for the oil. How many of you lock in? You know, so we're debating with all these things right now, wondering what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen, but I'm very firmly convinced of this. No matter what happens with the oil prices and everything else, God's work will be cared for, but we just need to all have our part and I'll be faithful. And so let me encourage you to do that. Ushers, would you come forward and we'll take up the tithes and offerings of God's people. Let's pray. Father, thank you for such a beautiful day. And Lord, thank you that we can come to church and gather around. Thank you for this property. Thank you, Lord, for these buildings. Thank you for these pews. Thank you for the air conditioning. Thank you for everything that we have, the sound system, just everything I could go on and on and on. That's all because of your goodness. And it's all because of the faithfulness of your people that give to make it all happen. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us, oh Lord, in these days, these, these times in which we live, just to continue to be faithful, uh, Lord, that the work of God uh, would continue to go forward, uh, Lord, all the ministries, the things that we want to do, Lord, to reach a community, just like this evening, going out uh, into Palmerton, and Lord, everything that we do for your honor and your glory, Lord, we'll thank you for it all, bless the gift, the giver, I pray that you'll bless it, Lord, and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. We got to sing a few songs together, and I don't know about you, but I enjoyed it so much. So I decided to do one more this morning, um, a familiar song to everybody. You know, the, the hymns that stand the test of time are usually the ones with the most powerful messages. Um, one that I think is familiar is just the simple song, Amazing Grace. Um, it's a simple message, um, but boy, it's such a powerful message. Just it tells what, again, what God has done for us. So I'd just like to ask you if you would, um, the words may be up on the screen, they may not. It's a familiar song. If you would just sing with me on Amazing Grace, we'll sing that first verse.
preach uh, something that I don't do very often. I'm going to preach part one this morning and God willing next Sunday I'll preach part two of this sermon. In the old days I'd have tried to cram it all in and we'd have been out of here about 1220. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. Um, a lot of good stuff I don't want us just quickly go over it talking about faith and of course our theme for the year identity and we should be identified as people of faith um, but what is faith you know um, and that's what we're going to look at this morning what faith is what faith is not and what faith is God gives us a point blank definition of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. It's known as the many titles, but uh, some people call it the great heroes of the faith chapter. Some people call it the great forgiveness chapter because every one of those people mentioned had, had problems, faults, but yet God calls them heroes of the faith. But let's look at the definition, very familiar to many of you. Um, whether you're here in person and, and thank you for those at home I don't want to ever forget about you and every week there's many many people uh, some people I know and many people uh, that I don't even know that just that just watch this sermon every week and I'm so glad uh, that you join us um, but Hebrews 11 and verse number 1 now faith is the substance of things what? hope for. That in itself seems like a contradiction. How can you have substance of just something that you hope for? And that's what makes faith so amazing in having faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Look at this here, the evidence, evidence of things not seen. Again, seems like a contradiction. How can you have evidence of things that you can't even see? Can you imagine a court bringing something for an evidence and you say well you can't really see it but it's there the judge would probably laugh you out of the courtroom you know but again faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen someone once said if you can see it then it's not faith because faith is something that you you don't see the evidence of things not seen Look at this here, for by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report or good testimony by faith. And we know, and I don't want to jump too ahead of myself with the scripture here, but we know in Hebrews 11, it also says, without faith, it's what? Impossible to please God. Faith pleases God. How many times did Jesus, in his disappointment, say to the apostles, I'm talking the apostles, O oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? 
one of those disciples is known amazingly as doubting Thomas. He saw the miracles. He saw everything. And yet he said, unless I see it with my eyes, unless I take my finger, put it to his wound in his hands, unless I take my hand and, and place it in his side, I will not believe. Think about that for a minute. Wow. Man, Thomas. <laughs> but you know, by the grace of God, Jesus showed up again, walked directly to Thomas. Because he knows our thoughts. He knows our words. He said, hey, Thomas, give me your finger. No, no. What did Thomas say, by the way, do you know? How did he address Jesus? My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Thomas, because you've seen, you believe. But do you know the little promise Jesus made? Blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. That's you. That's me. Let's pray. Father, help us now as we look at faith. The very, very foundation of our belief. Faith. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to see this week what faith is not and what faith is. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to be more aware of our faith. Help us not to have little faith. Help us to not have doubting faith like Thomas. Lord, help us to have strong faith. Lord, it's not easy. Like you told your disciples, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Help us, Lord, this morning as we talk about faith. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Bible tells us that we are to live by faith. Not only in the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament. Uh, Habakkuk, I'm, 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 I'm playing games with you, not on purpose, okay? So you got to pay attention with me up there. You do a great job, hallelujah. Habakkuk, chapter 2. Verse 4, as I jump around already, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in Amen. God. Romans 1, verse 17 for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Look at here. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. What a transforming thought. The just shall live by faith. One day that phrase spoke to a man named Martin Luther. The just shall live by faith. His wheels started spinning. And that what we call the Reformation was born. Because somebody realized the just shall live, what? By faith. You know how we need faith in this day and age in which we live. We need it. It's like a ship on its way from England to New York. I mean, a storm came up suddenly. The ship was hit and hit and hit. People were fearing for their lives. The captain was on deck doing his best, humanly speaking, all the things, all the tricks of the trade that he could do to keep this ship from sinking. They started to prepare. They started waking everybody up. They started preparing the lifeboats. They started preparing. And, you know, they went downstairs to wake up the captain's daughter that was traveling with him. And they said, honey, you need to wake up. I mean, the ship is tossed. We may, we may have to abandon Ship And this little girl said, is daddy on deck? And they said, yes, your father's on deck. And she said, okay. And she just fell back asleep. She had faith in her daddy that guess what? As long as daddy was in control, what? Everything was going to be okay. I think you know the application for that illustration. If we truly believe in our hearts 
that God is in control. We're going to be able to be at peace. We're going to be able to be at rest. Why? Because our faith. And Jesus, we read that one verse in Mark, Mark 11. It's amazing who Jesus was talking to when he said that. He wasn't talking to the, to the heathen. He was talking to the people of God, his very followers, when he said, have faith in God. And I'd like to say to you today and remind you this morning, hey, folks, have faith in God. And you know, the Bible would tell us so many things about this and the importance of it. Faith is so vital in the Christian life. Very, very vital. As a matter of fact, it's expected. As a matter of fact, it's a necessity, not an option. As a matter of fact, if God even tells us if we don't have faith, it's sin. Let's look at it. You probably know the verse, Romans chapter 14, verse 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat. Now, this, this chapter is amazing. It's talking about things, meat offered to idols, different things. They're arguing about things just like we today argue about different kind of things. Uh, oh, we could talk about that. But anyways, Romans 14. He that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is what? sin. Wow. If it's not a faith, it's sin. Wow, that's a pretty powerful statement right there. So when we have a lack of faith, we're sinning because we're not trusting God. Sometimes we think about sin as doing things that you shouldn't do. But sin is also not doing what you should do. And when you really think about all that, it can be downright discouraging if you allow it to be. When you realize how pitiful we are. We are. We are sinners, folks. Each and every one of us. And we never need to lose sight of that fact. I'm so glad that Paul said, you know what, I'm the chief of sinners. He didn't say I was. He said what? I am. The chief of sinners, but guess what God did? He reached down out of that, into that horrible pit, that miry clay, and what did he do? He lifted me up, set my feet upon a rock, and established my going. Look at this here, and I've already stated it, but we will never be able to please the Lord without faith. We need faith. Hebrews 11, right in the middle of this, this chapter, all these amazing people, these amazing things, God tells us without faith it is impossible to please him. It's impossible to please God without faith. Hey, you know what? It's impossible to be saved without faith. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are you saved, what? Through faith. Faith is that conduit that enables us to believe. I believe. Right? Do you remember when the Ethiopian eunuch asked Paul or asked Philip if he could be baptized? What did Philip say? The prerequisite, if you what? If you believe. If you believe. For by grace are you saved through faith. And look at this here. Not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we need that faith. Saving faith. And then what does God do? By faith, he helps us to grow. Faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so having strong faith will help us. Having strong faith, what will it do? It will lead us to victory in our Christian lives. And a lack of faith will lead us to a lot of hardships. Like we saw with the disciples, like we see with a lot of stories in the Bible, and like we see in our own lives. When we don't have the faith, right, to follow God, the faith to believe God, the faith to trust God, the faith to obey God, then guess what? We're not going to be right with God, frankly. We're not going to have the blessing of God. And so strong faith will lead us to the victory we need. Now, uh, just a couple thoughts for today, and then we'll finish the rest next week. But we're going to talk about the fallacies surrounding faith. When you hear some of these things, you might initially think, what? What? 
Is that true? Let me say what faith is not. Faith is not a blind leap. Faith is not being ignorant. Okay? Well, I'm just living by faith, you know? Faith is not being foolish. Faith is taking God at his word, trusting God at his word. You heard me tell the story many times over these 20 years of a friend that I had, a Christian guy that I worked with. But he started um, following this guy on the radio, all right? And all of a sudden, he got this idea that, you know what, I'm really not living by faith because I'm working a job and I'm really taking care of myself. And he was sincere. He was not a lazy guy. I worked with this guy for a long time. And I don't think he was using this as a, as a, as a means not to work. But he really started believing that he's not trusting God by working. God should supply his needs, not this job. And I would talk to him at work, and I'd say, yeah, but God also says if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. But you know... You know, line upon line, precept upon precept. We have to be careful when we take one verse and, and, and just make our whole lives about it. So he quit his job. He quit his job. He moved, well, first he moved away to take a job up in northern Michigan. Then he quit his job. And we were going up north on vacation to Mackinac. You ever go to Mackinac? We are going up north on vacation. I said, hey, let's stop in. Because we were friends with them. I mean, man, I spent a lot of time with them working. And he, he owned a bass boat. I really liked his bass boat. He loved to fish. I loved to fish. We caught lots of fish, okay? But I went up and visited him. At the time, I had no idea what was going on. And he told me, he says, you know what? I found out I was wrong. And he said, I, I'm working and I'm... I'm God needs to take care of me. And so he got really radical in this area. And he quit working. Needless to say, the family began to struggle. He had like three little kids maybe. Or, and, um, and his wife obviously did not believe in this type of, hey, man, how are we going to live? How are we going to pay our bills? Oh, by faith. That's what he said. Trust in God. That's what I'm doing. And it got so bad, he wouldn't do anything without first talking to God. Now, that sounds spiritual, all right? But the push, one day, their marriage ended. And here's why, because his wife broke down. You probably heard me tell the story. It's not a funny story at all. It's a sad story. His wife called and said, hey, because their vehicle was garbage. Everything in their life was falling apart because he didn't work. They had no money. His vehicle was just this old jalopy, and sure enough, they broke down. The wife called with the kids in the little minivan. I'm broke down. I need help. He said, let me pray about it. I kid you not. I kid you not. I got to talk to God about it. And he got back on the phone, and he says, you know what? God told me not to come. I'm dead serious. She said, you know what? That's it. That's it. I'm done. He lost his whole family. Faith is not taking a blind leap. Okay? Faith is not throwing all caution to the wind. And doing these type of things. What is faith? Faith is your response. And I like this definition. Faith is your response to the promises of God. Jesus told his disciples many things to do. He tells us through the scriptures many things to do. What is faith? Faith is our response to the promises of God for your life. God says, I will lead you. Faith responds, I will follow. 
God says, I will feed you. Faith says, I will eat. Right? And I could go on and on. But faith, look at this here. Faith is never a leap into the dark. It is always based on the Word of God. Yes, the Word of God. It is always based upon the firmest foundations, the Word of the Lord. Right? You've probably heard the cliche. God helps those that what? Help themselves. Now there can be some problems with that. But what's God saying? God, you follow me. You do this. And I'll what? Do this. It reciprocates. You do this. And I'll do this. So by faith, based on what you know the word of God says, you say, okay. But it's not some blind leap. Right? When I moved here uh, to Pennsylvania, wow, it was a big step in our lives. But can I tell you it wasn't a blind leap? Well, we're just going to go there and see what happens. You know? No. It was God speaking to me. Right? Uh, through his will and through his word. Listen to this next one. Faith is not a blank check. Okay. Well, you've probably heard of the prosperity gospel people. Right? Well, name it and claim it. Right? Faith is not a blank check. God is not some kind of cosmic Santa Claus. God is not a genie with a magic lamp. Well, yes, there are verses. Remember what I said earlier? Line upon line, precept upon precept. There are verses like John 14, 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. So that's the only verse you pay attention to in the Bible. Bless God, the word says it. I'm claiming it. And so you go ahead and ask God. You can fill in the blank. Well, I'm going to ask God for that white castle. Not the hamburger joint, okay? <laughs> you know, if you drive out here towards Kunkeltown on the left, you see that white castle? How many know what I'm talking about? I heard they sold it. Somebody told me they sold it to somebody. I don't know. But you know what? I drove by that white castle. And the Bible does say, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So you know what? I'm going to pull off the side of the road. I'm going to get on my knees. I might even march around it seven times. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm just telling you what people do. And I'm going to name it, and I'm going to claim it, and it's mine. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes God puts things in your heart, right? I'm not talking about that. Back at my former church, there was a corner that we wanted so desperately. It went for sale one time. We were so excited. We put the down payment on it. Guess what happened? Our preacher ran off at the secretary. For real. We lost half our church. We had the worst. We didn't even know if we were going to survive. Guess what? That property was gone. Somebody else came and bought it, and they were going to put a gas station there. We were so disappointed. We just knew God wanted us to have that property for a lot of reasons. But guess what happened? Years passed. We got a new pastor. Our church healed. We began to grow again. And it went for sale again because the township would not let the guy put a gas station there. And so we prayed about it. We claimed it. Yes, we did. But it just wasn't a blank check type of thing. We believed in our heart that God wanted us to have that. You know what I'm talking about? So yes, the Bible does say, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. But the Bible also says this. Let's look at 1 John 5, 14. 
And this is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything, sounds the same, doesn't it? Uh Uh-oh. It throws us a curve. It says, according to his will. Mm. So which one is it, preacher? Is it John 14, 14? If you ask anything in my name, I'm going to do it. Or... Is it 1 John 5, 14? This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, uh uh-oh, according to his will, he hears us. What's right, preacher? And let me tell you both. Boy, that can be confusing. But here's what we need to understand. Faith is not a blank check. Faith is not about naming it and claiming it. Faith is about trusting the Lord. His purposes, his plan, right? What does God want instead of what we want? Because there's another warning about this issue. James chapter 4, verse 3. Let's look at it. You ask and you receive not because why? Uh Uh-oh. You ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your own lusts. So we ask things through pride. We ask things through our own loss, things that we want to have, but things that's not God's will, things that God doesn't want us to have. So faith is not about taking a blind leap, right? I'm not saying you can always see what's going to happen, right? Children of Israel, they didn't know. Uh, All they knew is they were just trying to do God's will. And so faith is not naming it and claiming it. Let me say this also. Faith is not foolishness. Faith is not a foolish choice. You know, sometimes people would say, you're nuts. You're nuts for believing that. You're nuts for putting all your time and effort and money into that. They, they said to me, you're nuts. I mean, a preacher that I really respected He said, Butch, I travel all over this country preaching. Stay where you are. You're in a good church, good pastor, a big church. I mean, man, you're in a good spot. Just stay there. I said, man, I appreciate your counsel. I said, I love you, I respect you, but man, how can I do that if God's telling me to leave? And he said, yeah, I I understand, you know. But he said, hey, Butch, you're crazy. Why would you leave a church there in the city running 700 people? And come here and get voted in by 26 people. And I'm not trying to make myself sound spiritual. This is, I'm just trying to say it. Sometimes people will say when you make decisions, you're nuts. What are you doing? Hey, Peter, what are you doing? Man, you got that fishing business. And man, you got boats. You got, what are you doing? What do you mean you're, you're going to follow him and become a fisher of men? Huh? Fisher, are men. How are you going to pay your bills doing that? You know what I'm saying? And you're crazy. Faith is not foolishness. Yes, sir. Faith is not being a fool. One thing for sure. Look at this with me. You can trust God, but you better make sure it's God. Hello. Sometimes we can manipulate God, you know. Oh, man, I've been there before. You know, I, I tell you the story before. I'll, I'll bore you again. I tried to manipulate God. I was called to be a pastor. I went and told my preacher, hardest thing I ever did. Hardest thing I've ever done. One of the hardest top three in my life is to walk in his office and resign. We just built a brand new house. I mean, things were going great in our lives. My dad had 100 acres about an hour away. We had 13 tree stands there, four wheelers. I'm talking, every week my dad said, hey, you want to go get a steak? So we went out back, we went everywhere. Okay, I walked in there. My wife says, are you sure? I said, oh, yeah. This is what God wants. So I'll never forget it. You got a minute, preacher? Yeah. God wants me to leave. I'll never forget it. The look on his face, he leaned back in his chair. I said, are you sure? At that time, I was a youth pastor, the Christian school principal, the choir director. I could hear back then a little bit. 
I did all the church finances, did all the taxes, did everything. I'm not tooting my own horn. When I left, three different people were hired to replace me. I'm not, I'm not tooting my horn. But preacher said, are you sure? I said, I'm sure. First church that called me was in Flint. I lived in Waterford. Flint was one hour from Mama. Flint was one hour from that deer hunting property. I said, this is it. We're going to Flint. I knew the church. I knew the pastor that was leaving. And Josie said to me, God will never let you go to Flint. I said, shut up. Get thee behind me, Satan. This is God's will. One thing led to another. We didn't go to Flint. But have you ever tried to manipulate God? Doesn't work. I've done it. I've tried it. So you know what? Foolishness. Faith is not foolishness. Sometimes God will tell you to do something that even those closest to you think it's foolishness. I could go on and on. More stories. But it's not foolishness. If God puts it in your heart, if God said it. It's not foolishness. They call the Christian who lives by faith a fool. That's what the world says. You're a fool putting your time and effort into that. You're a fool. No. No. Look at this statement. When you choose to live by faith, there will be a deep, settled assurance that God is in absolute control in every situation. It's not about foolishness, it's about what? Trust in God. In Sunday school this morning I mentioned, I mentioned Matthew 6.33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply what? All your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So faith is not about taking a blind leap especially those leaps that go against scripture. Faith is not name it, claim it. It's about the will of God. Faith is not foolishness. Even though some people would say you are being foolish, no, you're trusting uh, the Lord. And so what do we need to do? The just shall live by faith. The only way we're gonna please God is by faith. Right? Without faith, remember we read it, it's impossible to please God. And let's look at this statement with me. If we are determined that we're going to please the Lord, then we're going to have to walk by faith. To walk by faith in Him, in His Word, and in His will. So, the fallacies surrounding faith. Now, let's talk about the facts. The facts surrounding faith. Well, those two phrases are very important that we looked at briefly. Things that are hoped for. Things that are hoped for by faith. Yesterday, my sister-in-law is here. It's good to have her here with us. But a big reason why she's here is because when my mother-in-law died, she was sick. She was not able to get, get on the airplane, come to Pennsylvania, so she missed her mother's funeral. So she came. So yesterday we went to the grave site. I had my Bible. And we had some closure, you know, looking at the scriptures. And you know what? Hope. Hope. The promise of the resurrection gives us hope. First Thessalonians 4, it says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. These words of hope, things that are hoped for. Faith gives me so much hope. And the promises 
that God has for us. And many of those promises we read at the gravesite yesterday. All those wonderful promises. And you know what? Evidence. What evidence do we have? Well, we have each other. Man, I see evidence of faith. How God transformed your lives. Made you into a new creation in Christ. So you know what I'm looking at this morning? A whole lot of evidence. And you know what Hebrews 11 is about? It's about evidence. God tells us about person after person after person after person that lived a life of faith and what God did because they lived a life of faith. So therefore, we're not in the dark about faith. I mean, God shows us the evidences all around us. You know, Romans chapter 1 talks about the evidence of creation are clearly seen by just looking around. The evidences of creation are clearly seen, and that's what God starts with in Hebrews. And I'm going to read you. There's a lot of scriptures here, so we're going to read them. We're not going to be much longer, but I hope you'll kind of slap yourself. This is usually the part of the sermon where you fall asleep, okay? So just pay, bear with me a little bit, all right? Um, God starts with creation in Hebrews 11. Look what it says in Hebrews 11:3. 3, the evidence here. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. In the beginning, God. Those are the very first words of the Bible. In the beginning, God, right? God said, and it was so. God said, and it was so. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, and it was so, God said, the only thing God didn't speak into existence is you. He formed us. He did not speak us into existence like he did everything else. He formed us from the clay. And unlike any other part of creation, he breathed into our nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. We're different. People would like to think, oh, we're no different. We're just, we're just the, the advanced stage of this evolutionary cycle. No, we have a soul. We have the breath of God inside of us. We have a living soul. Through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You know, there was a time when they didn't even know about neutrons, electrons, protons, protons, these atoms. and that, There was a time when people didn't even understand these things. But God created all of it. He created all of it. Now, it talks about Abel, the very next verse. No, we're not going to go through every verse of Hebrews 11, but we are going to look at many of these people. Abel, Abel by faith, offered what? a more excellent sacrifice than his brother uh, Cain. Look at, look at verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness of that, of that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. Right? He brought a blood sacrifice, like God said. He did that by faith. Because God said it, remember, in his word. He said that's what you're supposed to do. Cain had a better idea. Cain brought the fruit of the ground. That's not faith. That's your own thoughts. Your own thing. One, one of those brothers followed faith. One of them didn't. By faith, Abel, what did he do? He offered a more, by faith. Well, how about Enoch? Enoch, by faith, please God. I think it's interesting that God says about this particular man, he pleased God, how? By faith. Let's look at it, Hebrews 11.5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And he was gone. He was not found because God translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Think about that testimony. But in order to go to heaven, he had to be translated. What's that mean? Well, go to 1 Corinthians 15. This corruptible must put on incorruption, right? This mortal must put on what? 
immortality, flesh and blood, right? Shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So he needed to be translated. He needed to be changed. And one of these days, we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. But look at this here. He pleased God. What? By faith. Isn't it interesting? The very next verse says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Enoch pleased God by faith. That's the only way we're going to please God. Noah. How about Noah? Noah by faith. He couldn't see it. Think about this. It had never rained up to this point. The Bible teaches about a firmament. And the mist would come up from the ground. Nobody had ever seen rain. Before the flood, people lived to be hundreds and hundreds of years old. After the flood, not so much. I think one of the oldest is Abraham. He lived like 175 years. But before the flood, there was a bunch of them lived hundreds and hundreds of years. Things were different before the flood. The firmament, everything was different. Wow, what happened? The rains came. People never saw that. It come from underneath. It came from above. The whole earth was flooded. By faith, Noah didn't even understand how God was going to do it. Could you imagine the whole world flooding? Even to this day, I think about it. I think about every mountain being covered. Wow, is that even possible? That's human reasoning taking place. Is that possible? By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. Sometimes I don't think we realize how much faith Noah really had. Things that he didn't even see, never saw before, never could understand. But yet he had faith and he did it. Fear is a great motivator, by the way. Look what it says, moved with fear. He prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Why? Because he had faith to believe God. Rain's coming. I don't understand it. How this earth going to be flooded? I don't understand it. But by faith, every day. Think about how long it took him. That faith. Oh, Abraham. Much, much of Hebrews 11 talks about Abraham. We're not going to read all of it. But by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place that he should receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. He went out. Look at this. Knowing, not knowing whither he went. You know, at least I had the internet. Lee Height in Pennsylvania. Man, I learned a lot about this place before I ever visited here. Abraham didn't have Google. Google. He didn't know the demographics. He didn't know anything. He just obeyed by faith. And that's what faith is. Obedience. It mentions Isaac. It mentions Jacob. It mentions Joseph. It mentions Moses. Moses, by faith, said, you know what? I'm not going to be called anymore the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You know what? I'm going to follow God. And the Bible says he chose suffering. He, he chose affliction over the pleasures of sin. Because the pleasures of sin are only for what? A season. A season. It, says, it says that in Hebrews 11. So by faith, Moses said, I'm going to give all this up to be that deliverer, to be who God wants me to be. He did that by faith. Oh, how about this? Rahab. Rahab the a harlot. Yeah, it even says that in Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perish not. They said, hey, you know what? Trust us. Trust us. God will preserve you and your household. Believe us. Trust us. Strangers. Well, it takes a lot of faith. I don't even know you guys. I don't even know your God. But nonetheless, okay. Okay. And by the way, she lived. By the way, she's in the lineage of King David. Did you know that? That Rahab the harlot is in the lineage of King David because of her faith. 
And then Paul doesn't stop here. Thousands and thousands of other people, unknown people. I, I hesitated to read it, but, but let's read it because I think it's important. Let's look at it together, please. Hebrews 11.32, and what shall I say more? He mentions all these, these famous and known people. But he says this, For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness they were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to, uh, turned to flight the enemies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised also to life again, and others were tortured, not accept. You ever read the Fox's Book of Martyrs? Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. Study, study that one, what they used to do, cruel things. Sew people up in anim, animal skins and just turn them loose out into the wilderness. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Look at this here, what God says, of whom the world was not worthy. The world was not worthy of these people of faith that went through all these terrible, terrible sufferings because of their faith, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Boy, when I think about my own Christianity put next to these people, wow, man. Folks, those are the evidences of faith. Look around you in this room. We're not perfect. Oh, my goodness. But what are you looking for when you look at people? Their warts, their failures, their mistakes. Or what a miracle they are. What a miracle they are. They're here. Right? They're trying. There's a lot of good in people. We need to learn to look for that and realize, hey, you know what? That's an evidence of faith. Oh, yeah, but, 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 but. Yeah, you could say that about Rahab. You could say it about all of them. Oh, look at the evidences of faith. We see it all around us. Hey, in closing, faith is the assurance that God will do exactly what he promised to do. All those people, God gave them a promise. You do this, I'm going to do this. That's a promise. And again, faith is the assurance that God will do exactly what he promised to do. Let me ask you this morning in closing, what is faith to you? Is faith about taking blind leaps, you know, testing God? And we shouldn't test God, by the way. That's not faith. So it's not about taking blind leaps, putting God to the test. It's about trusting God, right? It's not about a blank check, name it and claim it. It's about realizing, hey, God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. And trusting that purpose and that plan. The things that God wants us to have, the things he doesn't want us to have. Knowing that God knows best. Paul said, God Take this illness away. God says, no, I know what's best. My grace is sufficient for you. That's faith. Trusting God that he knows best. It's not about getting your way, a blank check, right? It's not foolishness. So don't believe the lie of the devil. Don't believe those lies when the devil tells you, you know what, this is stupid. You know what, this is foolishness. You know, tonight at 5 o'clock, I have a flesh. And Ryan, last couple weeks ago, you came to me with that idea, right? And you stood up here and you said, you know what? It's God's job to save people. You know what we're doing? We're just getting the gospel out. That's what we're doing. 
Sometimes you think, ah, oh, it's stupid. Go there and it's hot and who, who wants me? Oh, tonight we're going at 5 o'clock. And again, I'm not trying to play mind games with you. I'm just saying how the flesh thinks. Ah, that ain't going to work. Man, going out there, putting those door hangers on people's, people's cars or people's houses. And, and you know, uh, it's foolish. It's foolish. But God says by foolishness, you read 1 Corinthians. Foolishness. People get saved through the foolishness of preaching, the foolishness of the gospel. So let me ask you this morning, how's your faith? How's your faith? Hey, are you looking at, looking at things that's hurting your faith? And we could all do that, whether it's outside those walls or within the walls that could hurt your faith. You can focus on those things, or you can focus on the evidences. Yeah, Moses, he did this, he did that. But, wow. Man, he, he obeyed God. He, he left Egypt. And I could go on and on and on. What are we looking at? And that'll, that'll give us a big indication of if our faith is pitiful or if our faith is strong. Who, who are we focusing on? What are we looking at? Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'll help us. What is faith? And, Lord, we can distort it. We can try to make you into a genie or somebody that's just there to give us what we want or to manipulate into what we want. That's not faith. Lord, I pray that you'll help us just to take an honest look at what our faith is. And Lord, where we are in our faith. Lord, have we been looking at the evidences of faith all around us? Or have we been looking at the negative, which will make our faith very, very weak and cause us to doubt? And Lord, I pray that you will help us. Help us increase our faith, just like the disciples came to you that one time and says, Lord, increase our faith. And Lord, help us to have that mindset. Help us to have that desire tonight, today, and even next week as we finish these thoughts. Lord, increase our faith. As the world gets darker, as things get worse, we don't need weaker faith. We need stronger faith. Help us, Lord. Please increase our faith. Lord, if there's anybody here that's never been saved, I pray that you'll help them by faith trust you today. Help them to be saved. Lord, help them to be willing to walk down this aisle. Help them to be willing to speak with me or, so, or somebody. Help them be willing to reach out through the, through the um, email or whatever. Lord, help us to be obedient to your Holy Spirit. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand to your feet, please?